Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Thank you for joining us today as we open up another portion of God's Word. You know, one of the hardest things for us to do many times is to admit that someone else's thoughts are better than ours. Even when we really know it is, it's still difficult to acknowledge that, isn't it? Well, the same would be true of God's will, and it's especially true when it involves the way we live. In Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 9, notice these words. Isaiah began by saying, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This text tells us that we should, first of all, seek the Lord. This is active. It means something that we must do. You know, so often today, man thinks that God has to do everything for him, and that God has already done everything that we need. But here, the text said that we need to seek God. And then we need to forsake our ways and our thoughts. Forsaking and returning are the two sides of repentance. You know, much of the religion today is, has, is man serving God his way. In other words, we want to serve God. We don't mind serving God at all as long as we serve God the way I want to serve God. But we cannot do that because the scripture says God's ways and God's thoughts are higher than ours. That's why we seek the Lord and we forsake our thoughts because God's thoughts and ways are quite different from ours. And they are much higher, much better. Now since God's ways and man's ways are different, then obviously we cannot do them both. The Jews of Jesus' day tried and failed to do that. They tried to serve God and their own ideas at the same time, and it did not work. Jesus said in Matthew 15 and verse 9, In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Well, when we come to the Paul's day, we find that the same thing was true. They were still trying to do it then, but of course it still was not working. Romans 10 verses 1 through 3 Paul said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. You see, they were seeking to serve God in their own way. And it did not work because they were substituting God's ways for their ways. You know, that's nothing unusual throughout the history of man. Man has always done that. Man has always added his own reasoning to that which is written. For instance, in that Genesis 3, verses 4 through 6, we find Adam and Eve. They were substituting their ideas for God's ways. Even Abraham. Great faithful Abraham had his problems in that regard. For instance, in Genesis 20 and verse 11, we find these words of Abraham. He said, because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will kill me on account of my wife. You see, God had promised to bless and to protect Abraham. But yet he went to a country where he thought that they did not fear God, which is probably true. They really did not fear God. But somehow or another, he did not trust God. He lacked faith and trust in God's promises. And so therefore, he thought that he needed to do something differently. But you see, his thoughts was not God's thoughts. In Genesis, I mean, Judges 21 and verse 25. 
In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did that what's right in his own eyes. Again, we find the people of Israel doing what they thought was right, but it was not God's ways. In 2 Kings 5 and verse 11, we find the pagan Naaman was told by Elijah to go wash in the river Jordan seven times and he would be cured of his leprosy. But of course, he did not want to do that. And he said uh, that he, the scripture said he became furious and went away and said, indeed, I said to myself, or the King James puts it, I thought within myself. He said, I, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. In other words, Naaman said, this is what I thought he was going to do. But instead, of course, Elijah did not do anything like he thought he was going to do. But again, we find it was Naaman's thoughts as opposed to God's thoughts. And it did not work. In Acts 23 and verse 1, we find that Paul uh, had the same problem. Even when he was doing what was wrong in the sight of God, he said, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And then in Acts 26 and verse 9, he, he said, Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You see, Paul thought he was always doing that which is right, but in actuality, of course, it was wrong. These are some examples of people who were doing what they thought were right, but of course, it was far wrong. Well, these examples are in sharp contrast to the following. For instance, Noah in Genesis 6.22 said, Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. And then Moses in Exodus 40 in verse 16, Then Moses did according to all that the Lord commanded him, so he did. And then finally, Naaman, we mentioned Naaman before, how he became furious and thought he was Elijah was going to do one thing, but he did something else. But finally, he came to himself and decided to do what God says. And then he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And when he did that, and of course he was cured of his leprosies. You see, we need to be following God's will. It doesn't really matter what I think. Because our ways and God's ways are two completely different things. Why must God's thoughts be our thoughts? Isaiah 55 that we just read said that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Now, why is it that God's thought must be higher than ours? In Psalm 94 and verse 11, it said, The Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are futile. The Lord knows what our thoughts are, and his opinion of our thoughts is that they are futile, or vain, foolish, void of result. In other words, we think we're so prideful of our knowledge, our intellect, and our abilities. We think we know so much, but in actuality, God looks at our thoughts and says, uh, they are just foolishness. You see, our thought leads to death. Proverbs 16, verse 25 said, There is a way that leads to, that uh, seems right to man, but the its end is the way of death. Yes, many times our way seems right, but the end result is death. Paul pointed out that the gospel is really foolishness. Gentiles laughed at the story of a crucified Savior and said, that's a foolish story. Who would believe such a thing as that? And the Jews thought the Messiah would be our earthly king. And so when Paul preached that God, Christ did not set up an earthly kingdom, then they thought it was a stumbling block. You see, and Paul even said that his manner of preaching was foolishness to man. In other words, it seemed like foolishness. He did not preach like the wisdom of the world said that he should be preaching. Our thoughts many times lead to death. And we also know that we need to be following God's thoughts because our thoughts keep us from following God. You see, you cannot do both. When you're seeking to follow what you think is right, then that prevents you from doing what God says. 
In Psalm 10 and verse 4, we find these words, The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. You see, when we seek to do our own will, then we cannot follow God because we find that God is not in our thoughts at all. There is no mixture between the two. There is no way to do both. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5, Paul said that we should cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You see, Paul said that even every thought should be brought into the obedience of Christ. In other words, our thoughts should be governed by what God's thoughts in God's way is. You see, there is simply no way that man's think so can equal God's said so. Our thoughts cannot be the same as God's ways. Psalm 119, verses 59 and 60, for instance. I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimony. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. Indeed, that should be our ideas here. We should think about our ways, and when we do, we turn our feet to God's testimonies and God's ways. And then we make haste. No, we do not delay to keep God's commandments. Notice that his thoughts were not on what he had, but what his, what God's ways was. We must not delay to turn to God. Obedience to God is of such importance that hesitating to keep God's will is out of the question. You know, oftentimes we hurry to sin. We're hurrying to commit sin in some way or another, probably because it is very enjoyable. Yes, there is pleasure in sin. But while we hurry to sin, many times we're very, very slow to repent. But you see, repentance is part of God's way. We must remember that God's ways is never our ways. And that God's ways is always higher than ours. We need to be like the Isaiah said in Isaiah 55. We should seek the Lord and forsake our ways and our thoughts. And the reason is very simple. God's ways and God's thoughts are higher than ours. And since they are higher and they are much better, then why are we trying to serve God in my own way? Why are we trying to serve God according to my ideas? We know they will not work. We can find numerous examples throughout the Bible that tells us that our ways will not work. The only way we can achieve the blessings of God is to do things God's way. I hope that this will encourage you to change your thinking, if that is your thinking, that you change your thinking to God's way, because that's the only way that we can inherit and enjoy the blessings that God has prepared for us. May you always turn your minds and your ways to God's ways. Thank you. It is God's will that you must be saved. First, listen to the Bible truth, and you must believe the truth. Then you must repent from your sinful life. Then you must confess by words that the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. You must be baptized for the remission of your sins. Every day our Lord added those who were being saved into his church. Be blessed by studying the word of God. To receive the Voice of Truth International Magazine, and to study the Bible systematically through our English Bible Correspondent Course. Kindly write to us. Our address, Gracious Word, P.O. Box 15, Arsredi Madurai, 625016, Tamil Nadu. For more details, dial 9244204420, 9244214421. God bless you. The Church of Christ salutes you.